thank you both for being here. So we know the group was loved, then unloved, and we've had some recent volatility and even some top picks coming out this week. Atem, where do we stand? I mean, is it the season for chip stocks? Hey, Nicole, good to be back. Um, listen, it's a, it's a very cyclical business traditionally. So uh, obviously NASDAQ doing, not doing too well. And obviously fears about the economy also not doing too well. Uh, people are selling these chip stocks. For us, it's a, it's a it really a cyclical growth story. You know, we're just getting started in this kind of digital transformation theme, and and chips are really the o new oil for that reason because you have to really have all these kind of different chips for clean energy, AI, um, uh, data centers, and and really so many so many different things. So I think it's a buy. And you like a name like Qualcomm, for example, right, Hatem? Or what names do you like? Yeah, we like Qualcomm, we like NVIDIA. Um, these are both stocks that you know got killed this year. Uh, Qualcomm, big, big player in the, in the mobile space. They also get into AI. Uh, NVIDIA, obviously, gaming, data centers, AI. Uh, so these are just really top companies that are really trading at, at, at a, at a have, have, have lost a lot of their value, but long-term have really tremendous prospects. And Daniel, where do you stand on the big picture of the group? Yeah, I think the comments there are mostly spot on. I think you got to take a zoom out look. If you look at everything that's going to advance in the next five to 10 years, it's all going to be built upon semiconductors. You can't run software on air. You can't. You can't run applications for your business. You can't uh, build out data centers. We can't build self-driving cars. All the things that we want to do are going to be semiconductor dependent. We know the pandemic pulled a ton of demand forward. We knew we created a glut. We knew we had a supply chain uh, shortage. So it was a perfect storm that drove prices up. And then the same storm now with inventory is taking them back down. But if you're zoomed out and you're looking at the big picture, it's impossible to not say that semiconductors are going to be at the core of the next era of growth in technology and business. That being said, is the group oversold? Are there certain names that are better positioned than others because of how they're exposed? I mean, there were times people would come on and say, you know, you want the chips that are related to autonomous driving. And then the next day I would have someone come on and say, you don't want those chips that are related to autonomous driving. I mean, that's an example, Daniel. What kind of chips do you like and why? Yeah, you know, I've talked a lot about liking some of the companies with very low exposure to consumer right now. I do think we're going to have a prolonged period. It could be a year plus where some of the more consumer focused like PCs and gaming could see some slowing. We are watching the fallout of the crypto uh, industry. And we know NVIDIA, for instance, had much larger exposure to crypto than it was uh, initially communicated. And that wasn't entirely on them. They were figuring it out as it went. But Gaming was growing, but crypto was exploding. And so there's there's that. So, But at the same time, NVIDIA's data center business looks pretty good. I mean, I like Qualcomm, as uh, was suggested before, because I think their diversification into automotive, but also on the premium tier, I think that's really robust. But I've also mentioned names like Marvell, Lattice Semiconductor, companies that have almost no exposure to your traditional consumer semiconductors. I think those are some really ripe companies to make some good comebacks. And if you saw Marvell, for instance, a ton of selling, although it really hasn't had a bad quarter yet. Right. And Hatem, where do you stand when you think of some of these names? I mean, you know, Daniel's brought in some other names. I know you originally said Qualcomm and NVIDIA. Do any of these other names, uh, are they of interest to you? I mean, you can also be like Buffett and buy the manufacturer of chips. I think he, he bought 4 million shares of TSM this, uh, this week, which really was uh, interesting. Uh, they don't usually... Uh, invest in technology except for Apple and it's just a huge confidence boost to the whole sector for them to buy um, uh, TSM Taiwan Semiconductor you know there was a, a political act or, or, or the chips act that was passed a few weeks back and that's really a huge bet on bringing some manufacturing to the US uh, so you can kind of think of the, some of the names there that will start building some chips here because right now 80 percent of the chips are built basically in Asia Right, and Taiwan Semi, I mean, that's a great point that you brought up. And really, week to date, Taiwan Semi's up almost 11%. Um, month to date, 33%. Daniel, what about a name like Taiwan Semi? Yeah, I, Taiwan Semi is at the core. I think 100% of your actual foundry based leading edge is being produced either by Taiwan Semi or Samsung. And there's a lot to like about that. They have a ton of pricing power. 
Um, I think it depends if you have concerns about the geopolitical landscape. I know Intel has been kind of out of favor, but it's sitting under 30 bucks now, and the company has an aggressive plan under Pat Gelsinger of five nodes in four years. If they're able to execute, that could be really interesting. But more interesting is Intel's commitment to manufacturing and acting as a foundry here in the United States. Now, they do manufacture some of the leading edge here, which is not necessarily in that foundry number, even though Intel's a big client to the foundry. But if Intel can execute and the U.S. continues to support this idea of onshoring leading edge manufacturing, if you're kind of like I said, going back to my early comments, if you're in that zoom out mode and you're saying, yeah, Intel's had some rough runs for the last 10 years, but going forward, if they can win some big customers, can an AMD, Qualcomm mention potentially using them? If they win that business, Intel has a big opportunity to grow in Foundry. There's a lot of doubters, but they're doing a lot of work in that Ohio mega fab. I mean, we need that production here for our supply chain and for our national security. Yeah. And Hatem, what's the big picture here? If it's not semis, people, you know, there are some people who said tech is dead, it's overvalued, um, forget about it. You and I often talk about Tesla. I mean, Apple's a name people love to talk about. Are there other names in tech or related tech that you like, Hatem? I mean, listen, it's it's a tough year all around, right? There is a, uh, a really rebalancing act that's happening, revaluation of all asset classes because interest rates are are going up. But the reality is, growth is 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 going to lead us out of this eventually. And you know, tech is changing so many aspects of our lives. Maybe driving, driving, self-driving at some point. But just EVs. I just came back from from Europe. The cost of uh, gas in Europe is almost ten dollars a gallon. There is a huge, huge move to uh, electric vehicles there. And Tesla is just starting to to produce cars in Berlin. So there is that sector that we really li like. Uh, clean tech is also another another place that I think it's just getting started. Batteries. Uh, Daniel, just yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it right there. Daniel, do you have another name that may be related or tech-related that you love quickly? Yeah, I, I like some of the old boring, the IBM and Cisco's and, and Oracle's. I think these are going to be the deflationary tech plays along with a cool new name in ServiceNow. All right. Great to see you both. Daniel Newman, Hatem Diab.